All right, yo, what is good with y'all? I felt like making another race tier list because there were a lot of balance patches in the recent update. And if y'all haven't dropped a sub, just drop a sub already and join the Discord if you haven't already too. And let's just get into it. Uh, we're gonna start off with Venary, I think. Yeah, that's Venary. Um, Venary is insanely good for rogue and it's good for farming, but it's not really viable in bosses. It's not really too viable in like like big fights you know what i mean like it, it's good for farming though so i'll put it in like I'll, honestly i'll put it in a it's so good for farming that like it's the only really viable race for farming so it's basically the race for rogue uh so i'm gonna put it in a it could possibly be lower to b but it also has that passive where it can drink more potions higher enchant prog it's not too bad against bosses you know what i mean with like a frost um assassin crit build drop like with venary you could go crazy bro all right dragwa dragwa i'm gonna put in b uh I'm, it might have been like a in my last tier list it dragwa is just kind of falling off dude i mean healing on crit is great or whatever but crit builds in general aren't too too great against bosses like metrom's vessel unless you're running dolahan or or you know just dolahan honestly um illusion cage doesn't even stun metron's vessel it's pretty decent against like solo bosses blood shards heals pretty decently it's pretty it's a pretty decent race in general the the buff you get enhanced bloodlust not enhanced bloodlust onslaught where you kill an enemy you get um a buff the buff is really low dude like honestly the buff sucks all right let's get to estella Estella's going above Venary in A tier, dude. Estella kind of, like, I don't know where I put in the last year. I think I put it in, like, roll off tier. But after that Berserker buff, dude, Estella is kind of, like, kind of, like, a really good race to go with Berserker now. Like, Estella, um, against MV, the buff that you get after getting below half HP, you get, like, a big damage buff. That's permanent, even if you get above 50% HP, apparently. Um, you're also getting he a healing buff when you're low HP, so some people even go Estella with Saint. Because you can get a healing buff when you're low HP. And honestly, overall, Estella's like really looking really solid right now. Like, the Hyper Rage is, is there, dude. It's pretty strong. And the Enduring Fighter is, is pretty good. The healing buff is good. It's 50%. Vastain is going into C tier. Vastain just kind of sucks overall, guys. Like, I'm going to be honest with y'all. Vastain, like, in a... It's good for summoning classes, right? But Necromancer is really bad right now, and Dark Wraith is as well. Everyone keeps saying, oh, well, Dark Wraith can solo Yarthul, Necromancer can solo Yarthul. What class in the game can't solo Yarthul or Thorian? There was a guy on YouTube, I don't know I don't know who it was, I'm sorry, I don't remember the name, but he literally soloed Yarthul with no class. He soloed Yarthul classless. You are not special if you can solo Yarthul on a class. It doesn't matter if Necromancer or Dark Wraith can solo Yarthul. They're doing literally nothing against MV. They're not that great for farming either. You need to spend extra turns just for setup. Vastain is dog water right now in the meta. It is truly, truly tragic. Daminos. You see, Daminos on my old tier list would go straight into S, but now I'm putting it above Estella. It's, it's top of A. I'm going to be putting it in top of A, dude. Mulligan Realm is still amazing. Don't get me wrong. Mulligan Realm is amazing. Restructure still sucks. But due to the fact that Saint got gutted, Daminos in turn basically gets gutted. And that's all I really have to say about that. Dolahan is still S tier. Despite all of the DOT nerfs that uh, MV got, like you can't do as much DOT damage to him anymore. Ghost Flame is still on top. Ghost Flame still does so much damage to MV, dude. It does so much damage to MV. Um, I, I heard... I don't know when this was, but Nuova Prime nerfed the Ghost Ghost Flame head uh, damage from like 20 damage to 13 base, which is kind—it's kind of insane to think it was 20, but dude, 13 base is still really high damage. Like we're talking like that's really high damage. You also, you know, you have the extra life, you get fire resistance, more essence gain, you get um more stat points in general, like straight up like a decent amount of extra stat points in every stat. Like, Dolahan is just, it's just the best race, probably, in the game. And it's going to stay that way for a very long time, until, like, a big meta shift happens. What is this right here? This is, um, Nisei. Yeah, it's Nisei. Nisei, um, Nisei's pretty solid. It's, I'm going to put it in, like, maybe, like, like, 
low A, maybe high B. I'll put in high B. Nisei's um, elemental damage buff that he gets, like the passive damage buff it gets, is pretty good. Pretty damn good. It's good against MV because, you know, you have a high... Actually, you know what? I will put it in, in low A. I will put it in low A. You have the energy gain, which is really good, to M good against MV because MV takes away your energy and he... um. You can you can gain energy really quickly with circuit charge. Um, you also get like a twenty percent chance to get double potions. That's 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 so that's negligible. You know what I mean? Fifteen percent damage bonus damage to magic and fire elements damage. That's what's good. That can make Blaze in MV in Metrom's vessel. Blaze can one shot his Shade Blades with that buff. That's a really good buff right there. Corvolus is going. I think um. I think it could be interchangeable with Estella at this point. I would put it below Estella though right now. Corvallis is really drippy first and foremost, but second, it's extremely good with Ranger right now. It has really high arcane scaling. I think it's the highest arcane scaling in the game. Arcane Ritual is insanely good. It boosts outgoing and incoming healing. 40% chance to boost fire, dark, ma holy, magic, and nature affinities damage by 40%. It's really good with Ranger right now, and you um you also gain like extra magic damage, chance to get extra energy. You know, it's it's just overall a really good race. I wish they would change the fast learner passive, learn classes three levels earlier than normal. I wish they could just change that. Like that's kind of trash. No one really cares about that. Stoltis, you see, Stoltis was really good for a short period of time. Ranger speed was like one of the best builds in the game. And then Nuovo Prime nerfed it. He pulled it. He pulled it. He pulled. He did a pull to nerf Ranger Speed. And everyone said don't nerf it. And he still just nerfed it. But it's still going to be pretty pretty decent right now. I'll put in like high B. The problem once again. I said this in the last tier list. Stoltis can only go one build. And that's Ranger. Back then it was only one build. And that was Blade Dancer. I guess Ranger is pretty decent with Stoltis. But that's all you can go. You can literally only go Ranger with Stoltis. There's no other viability. It's okay against MV. Ranger is okay against MV. Um, it's overall a decent class. That's why it's high B. You know what I mean? It's not really It's not really going to be S tier like Lentum is though. Lentum is definitely S tier. Lentum is one of the best races in the game, dude. Just go Paladin with Lentum. It's so crazy. I made a build video on it. Paladin Lentum. It's, it's literally unkillable. You also gain extra regen regeneration um you get like you debuff attackers that you block against overall really good bane kind of sucks the bane skill kind of sucks but it's, it's, it's still not that bad you know what i mean amoris now amoris did get buffed in this balance patch they made um the hexing what is it called hexing rend dual scale i mean undiluting hex that's what it's called undiluting hex the problem that um amoris has in my opinion is that all they need to do to make this race really viable and really good is just make it so that it's passive where it can't get hexed make it so that it can't get hexed and cursed that's what it says in the description anyway dude and also buff sinister gaze sinister gaze is so trash right now it does no damage the debuff thing i don't even think works i'm not too sure if it works but um overall i'll put it in like 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 below uh like below stultus <laughs> Sure, you can hex like Yarthul, you can do all that. And I'll put it above Stoltis, you can do all that, but like it's doing literally nothing against Metrom's vessel. Like literally nothing. And let's just get to Shia. I only included Shia in the tier list because um, I've been using Shia recently due to my boy Saint Dinero helping me out and letting me use his Shia. But uh, where would I put Shia? Dude, it has that passive. Okay, so first it gets four lives instead of three. It has Skyward Bolt. Which is a really good skill. It does insane damage. And I don't think it's dodgeable either. Um, and it also has the... This, this is the main thing of the race. You get minus one cooldowns on all moves. That is really good, bro. Trust me. You, you, don't, you don't understand how good minus one cooldowns on every move is. Like, your Skyward Bolt is six cooldown, six turns cooldown? No, it's actually five because of the minus one cooldown thing. Uh, I'll put it like... Um, maybe above Estella, below Daminos. I mean, here's the problem. It doesn't have. It only has one skill, but it's gonna get more in the future. And honestly, the drip factor is insane. I think it's the drippiest race in the game, honestly. And honestly, that's about it for the tier list. 
Let me know if y'all agree. Um, make sure to drop a sub, and I'll see y'all in the next one.